I want to ask Sinaida first, um, what, dri what, what was the drive for you to begin this project? It was a hotline and um, the hotline for me was a kind of, uh, you know, uh, instrument for connection, you know, it's like our blood. And actually our volunteer group uh, has a name hotline uh, and uh, that's how uh, we unit uh, we had like um, we had connection to each other you know and we um, explore you know the things what we could do it in this moment when we had revolution time it was a kind of hard time for Ukraine uh, this is for me is a deep meaning and even how I met uh, my friend Hugo you know like one year ago when I came to, un to New York as, as, uh, as a woman you know and as a creative woman, you know, how you can uh, find, you know, the role, uh, not only in art, in, uh, uh, like you said, uh, a part of the life, as, uh, social life and social role. So uh, I, I would like you to tell about this project, little, just a little, you know, information. When you, you know, maybe we will continue our conversation with a small stories, which is a really like a, a real stories of uh, my part of life and Hugo part of life. And you will understand why we are connecting and why this hotline came to our life. It's very interesting because I think uh, Sinaida's work is really connected to mine in the sense of we're both interested in gender, which I think it's a very uh, controversial uh, subject right now. But I think it's also something that was urgent for artists, for society to start talking about. So my project is, it's, an, it, it's nothing institutional, it's nothing, uh, it's not a document or anything, it's more a personal project in an, in an exploration to meet the artists that I feel more connected to. So I, I contacted Marina Abramovic, Tania Bruguera, Tracy Amen, Shirina Shad, Joko Ono, Orlan, and Kiki Smith. First of all, I wanted to, to have a, a very different kind of artist uh, background-wise. And these seven women that I interviewed and that I portrayed in this book, uh, they really broke the mold. They really uh, opened the path, not just for women, but for Latin American artists, for Afro-American artists, for gay artists, for trans artists. And this project alongside uh, with Sinaida's is just a little bit of uh, a window for people to see what's going on in the minds of these women. And they don't have to be celebrities, they don't have to be uh, artists. I, I really, if we are, I have here some friends, you know, who of course knows about my art. And uh, that's why I don't feel, I feel that they know that that's what, that's why I shouldn't uh, tell more, you know. <laughs> that's. years we have more than 10,000 dies you know from uh, uh, you know most of them are soldiers we never uh, okay we are talking a lot about uh, that is uh, our you know powerful part of our you know country but let's say that how many sufferings from we have from women's side you know daughters mothers sisters so that's the main problem now for Ukraine like I see uh, our power is growing up and uh, is, uh, we are breaking stereotypes, you know? So uh, during uh, Maidan, during revolution time, those uh, volunteer souls, uh, you also wait, was taking a, a very, you know, powerful part for communication, for uh, coordination, you know, questions, for manage, managing things. Yeah. And now most of them, it passed four years, they have a, a, a you know, they are, playing political role in our country. That's How is going on, you know, now in a really powerful uh, country for uh, women power. <laughs>
talk about what you're wearing, mm. it's not only it's fashionable now, but there's a very special meaning that you told us about your young oh, hair. Oh, uh, country for uh, women power. <laughs> now, uh, let's say that Ukraine now in kind of situation when there is art is just uh, not uh, is an instrument of social uh, language, social uh, instrument. Not, uh, we don't have exactly now art market in Ukraine. So, and uh, uh, from each one we help how, like all countries doing volunteer work. So uh, I have my, uh, I uh, organize like small organization I do, uh, uh, like art therapy, let's say, in the hospitals with the soldiers. And this is kind of, I, I gave it name art rehabilitation because it's, uh, it's not uh, straight art therapy. So, and, and it give you, you know, like a, a kind of our support. Uh, uh, those jackets, they were staying uh, during the war, they were staying in this jacket, you know, like, and uh, they hate actually them because they say, you know, it's, uh, we washed them a lot, you know, and it has a kind of special, you know, s smell, you know, which is a smell of the war. Right. So we there is a pocket, yes, there is something inside. So this is, is makes, give us, you know, like protecting energy, an energy of love, energy of uh, supporting from uh, families from during loud uh, to bring uh, in America, you know, the things uh, like, uh, you know, um, medals. medals, you know, and I ask boys, you know, I ask soldiers, please don't take out this, uh, you know, things. And he's, they said, why? We, sh we want you to be where it was. Uh, I said, no, it's, uh, it's uh, actually, it's not allowed. And what they did, you know, they just, you know, hiding them <laughs> yeah and like few days ago when i met you i just realized i said okay what is inside you know and uh, that was you know these things you know what they got you know and during the war <laughs> yeah. yeah so and but this is, is not so this is just formal yes but let's say you know this is, is very interesting you will understand how much love you know our people trying to give it you know to our soldier who protect our land so they have a lot of uh, uh, letters from the kids you know from children so they send them this kind of letters you know from the school kids garden you know from different regions so um, and uh, like they give them kind of talisman, you know, they send this one, you know, uh, like a small print book. And all these things, you know, uh, they, like they told me soldiers that, you know, we hate this, you know, this is, is uh, like remind us of the war, but this is the uh, power. This is uh, what gave us, you know, hope and, you know, power to stay, you know, on this war. So, and actually, if I tell you, you know, most of them uh, are really um, a big, a big power for our U country. And that's why we believe in each other. Now we are more uni uni unified. unified. And uh, uh, that's how uh, uh, is, uh, if you see, you know, uh, from the news, that how many, you know, they actually they're showing news that it looks terrible. But if you uh, come to Kiev, and I think you felt it, though everyone has like bright and eyes, you know, and hope and believe in the country. So it's like uh, more love in, you know, in we really changed for last four years. And, uh, 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 and our culture is uh, really, you know, powerful also, like uh, I used to do before my works more about uh, uh, folk, you know, about ethnography. So, and uh, it, it was my like dissertation way, you know, so I was trying to uh, 
search and learn a lot about our culture just to understand what is the difference between Russia and why uh, we have uh, different tradition, why we have different mentality. Uh, it's not, let's say, that I was uh, kind of fan of our, I just wanted to uh, um, compare, even uh, I was trying to compare with different culture, cu cultures like uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, you know, I'm traveling a lot, I'm tra uh, I really uh, very interested about spiritual things uh, like uh, in churches, how it works, you know, like in uh, rituals, so that's uh, mm, uh, after my 10 years of traveling, before you know this uh, drama in Ukraine, I realized that uh, Ukraine is uh, has a special something special in our uh, tradition. And I'm going next year to Japan because my grandfather he's Japanese. He was Japanese. He was abandoned as a child in Mexico City. He lost contact with his ancestors his relatives from Japan, so my family doesn't know anything about my Japanese heritage and next year I will go to Japan to, to look for them. And I, want to, and I wanted to ask you also, because I'm curious, uh, uh, just recently I was uh, talking to an artist called Carry My Wimps, she's an, a very important African-American artist, and we were talking about how uh, still, Latins and African American artists we're, were exposed to cliches when we when we are confronted by the art reviews, art critics, right? Because it's not only the the Latin, the African American art, but it's also the the review, the perspective. And uh, we we both agreed that it was important to have curators, to have critics that understand these realities. Because if you write about the reality that you're not uh, used to, that you're not familiar to, it can really go to another, a different way. So in your, in your experience, how, uh, how these critics' reviews from your show mm -hmm. have been, like they have been accurate uh, to what, what's happening? Actually, uh uh, when, uh, you know, uh, war came to our country, uh, I decided that there is, uh, I should uh, go out from the gallery and museum, so, and the art should be a part of uh, my life, not just, you know, for limited society. Uh, I should do, you know, I should be m more uh, for, um, you know, common people, you know, not just the people who knows about art. So uh, actually, uh, you know, it's uh, kind of my, for my country, I uh, like, I break uh, all connection with the uh, curators, with the galleries, and these things I never go in, you know, so I just, uh, uh, I don't, I don't even, uh, uh, I, uh, let's say, I don't send invitation to them. <laughs> so if I do something, my project, so if they want, they come, you know, but uh, I believe that, uh, and my art actually, I don't do the art which is uh, art, art. So I just uh, do uh, the things what is, uh, has uh, in my life. I don't create something for purpose, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, for example, this work which is uh, downstairs in the basement, this is, I just uh, shoot, you know, common life in one village, you know, and uh, I realized after, you know, when I finished this work, this, this is kind of uh, allegorical uh, work for the situation in which has happened in Ukraine, you know, because this is a coffin flying on the, in the sky. So, and this is a normal life for one, in one village, which makes me, uh, you know, uh, unforgettable, unfor uh, unbelievable feeling how it, it is. It's very, uh, in symbolic way, uh, two mountains, you know, one mountain is a village and one mountain is a church. Uh, with, cemetery. with cemetery. So uh, if someone dies, they uh, transport coffin, body in a coffin, and the other uh, mountains by the special construction, just, you know, uh, the metal wing, uh, 
a will and uh, they have bridge for alive people and they have this special construction for the coffin. And that's how they do it and they don't give the meaning of this. But if you just like just watch this work, you will understand how it's, uh, uh, it has too much meaning, you know, in the way how it is, you know. Uh, so that's uh, mm, actually, mm, if you catch the things what is around you, that's, you see it and you just fix it with your eyes, it's already art, it's already your creation power. So uh, it shouldn't be, you know, like I think that it shouldn't be just for special people that you are doing and showing this. Uh, and especially for the, I don't know the people who will spend now money for art in Ukraine. Most of the people are trying to, uh, you know, uh, to buy, you know, uh, first needed things. You know, oh and help refugees to cover costs, uh, uh, basic products, and to give them shelter. So everyone involved in providing for the most needed parts of the society right now. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people lost their homes, so there is this urgent demand to give them basic shelter and basic food. You, if you have like uh, even extra clothes, immediately you go and you bring, you know, just to help people. So it's just, you know, uh, it's, it's automatically you do in our country now. How political art can really transform the art system itself. Because you're talking about uh, quitting your galleries, quitting your, uh, you know, all the, 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 the connection with, mm. let's say, the products. Uh, that you're selling as mm -hmm. art. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, political art is more than that. And actually, wh when I'm talking to political artists, it's, that's what they're saying. Sometimes galleries, museums, they uh, sometimes push artists to become producers. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what political art is not. So basically, I think political artists are trying to convey and trying to find a new language to speak to the nanny or 10,000 people in the streets protesting, not only uh, art circuit uh, people. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really, it's really interesting and it's also a part of um, exploration of what you can do. But I don't think it's not, it doesn't necessarily, I think it's art. Mm -hmm. at the end. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't fit with mm -hmm. the structure of the whole art system, but I think it's art. And I think it's very important that you are trying to do this in, you know, b people living in Cuba, mm -hmm. in Kiev, in Venezuela, like with really harsh regimes right now. It's really hard to convey and to uh, work with art in that sense. Mm -hmm. So what, what would be your next project, let's say? Are you, are you thinking mm -hmm. about something? Uh, actually, you know, I, uh, I have a lot of uh, video which is uh, in like in raw condition, uh, which uh, is waiting my time to work with this. Uh, because like I told you, I'm uh, still researching, in, you know, the culture. And I'm trying to find unique place in our country, unique uh, uh, facts, you know, traditions, and to, to make a, a kind of work, uh, video works uh, with uh, this. It, it, it sometimes it looks like a fantasy, you know, but uh, it's, um, it's, uh, it's actually a real story. So uh, um, I should... Uh, uh, in uh, autumn time, I did nice uh, video works. I mean, it's not ready; it's in draft condition. So I did uh, about uh, how. Uh, uh, shepherds uh, shepherds uh, goes to the mountains and staying there like four months with a out of civilization, you know, with a, like. A, uh, 1,000, 2,000 heads of sheep and so and how the roles are changed actually. 
you know so they do they take care about uh, heads you know so the, about cows and uh, sheep so and they produce milk they produce cheese and imagine that they are living in the round house old one you know like it, they built it a long time ago without electricity without anything you know so it's just you know in the uh, wild condition you know like uh, very <laughs> And even, you know, the very interesting thing, they, uh, they speak with, okay, I know uh, Ukra Ukrainian language, but they have their own language, how, the way how they speak with each other, you know, mm -hmm. how they speak with, to the coast, to the, you know, but they're re doing really hard work, you know, so. And at the same time, their wives staying in the village, they're waiting them for four months, and they do work which usually they do, you know, so like the roles are changes, you know, so it's, uh, that's interesting uh, fact, you know, how we can, ch but it's, uh, we think that the roles are changed, uh, but actually it's, uh, it's, it's 100 years has happened like that. It's how it is, you know. Uh, we can say during revolution times the roles is changed. The volunteers was doing, you know, the work which is uh, more uh, uh, like, let's say, before we, we could say that it's not women work. Mm. No, I love it. And actually, uh, Sinaida invited me to Kiev for, <laughs> for a while to just uh, to feel it. Yes, yes, just to, I'll take you to the, some special place there you really feel, you know, uh, uh, un, uh, you know, unwaiting things like uh, it's, it can really help you, you know, with uh, to identify, you know, uh, uh, the things what I'm talking in my works, you know. Mm -hmm. So do, do you have a question for Sinaida? And for Hugo. <laughs> yeah. Say, you know, uh, um, I realized that art work is a therapy early on. Yeah. yeah, you mean this, yeah. So, uh, actually, uh, uh, let's say, for example, this project, yes, this work, uh, uh, it happened, you know, exactly, uh, just, you know, revolution finished, so we had like, we stayed four months on a central square, uh, and also, you know, it was uh, kind of hard time. So, but when uh, the time, um, uh, when it came, you know, just, uh, you know, first week of peaceful time, so uh, the all, uh, you know, uh, protester has kind of post-traumatic syndrome, yes? So they felt, you know, like very stressed from the things what happened. So, and uh, that's how uh, I decided to do this work. So we just uh, wanted to, uh, they wanted, they had the feeling to talk a lot, you know, like they couldn't stop. Like we, uh, we rent a house, a big wooden house, and we stay like two days. And during all those two days, there was talking, emotion, nobody was, uh, listening to each other, so it was like house. But I realized that we should give it, uh, you know, those emotions we should put in something, you know, like uh, to improve this emotion. And I asked to do this kind of like therapy. I will shoot them and they will improve those emotions like just silence way, you know, like with uh, the feeling what 
uh, just to uh, like it was like exercise to remember what happened and uh, in and in the same time uh, to open eyes and to prove with the eyes like you see this video and everything so and this is help them like therapy to uh, purify emotions because when we finished this shooting there was they felt so good you know they told me oh my is is we feel now like empty you know so we feel much better it's like it's a new step it's gonna be now for our life we like leave it this you know with those uh, stress and uh, uh, and this work uh, was for me like kind of uh, hidden I didn't want to, to show this work it was kind of more for us, you know, but uh, uh, we, we have, uh, and first when I showed this work, it was after one year after uh, revolution time, after this uh, situation in Ukraine, and uh, it, this work was chosen for Pinchuk Art Center, it, we have like institution, art institution uh, for contemporary art, and um, uh, and the girls and other people came, you know, for the exhibition, and it helped them to remind, you know, maybe those emotions or something. The first idea for what, you know, we uh, uh, got, you know, uh, too much painful and sufferings in Ukraine, because now uh, there is a lot of speculation about political situation in Ukraine about if uh, it was right or not right to that revolution happen and uh, that uh, we, we broke the system, you know, we uh, like uh, maybe because now, uh, like I told, the economy is uh, in very low uh, level. So, uh, but this is gave it uh, uh, another more hope, you know, and believe you know and trust to ourselves and to be to stay with the first idea main idea you know for our country that's uh, it work like kind of therapy you know <laughs> if So this is uh, actually if for your question. So if I, uh, if you understand me, so this is uh, uh, how you know uh, um, it can involve even the kids. You know uh, that uh, it can give them idea that this is just a simple goal. You know, so it's not a stars. It's no. It's just a simple, but they are uh, heroines. So there can be, uh, you know, they can uh, change, uh, you know, the system. They can be, uh, uh, they be, they been so brave to be, to to change the system, you know. So, and uh, this is uh, is uh, this work gives uh, uh, um, also, you know, uh, for society. Uh, uh, to real idea, to purify idea about uh, the situation with Maidan. Because like I told you now, there is a lot of speculation that it was... Uh, it was... Even they say that America organized this... Uh, 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 yes, this... Uh, the, that was uh, by support from America. And, but uh, I will tell you the truth, you know, I've been the first activist in Maidan, so I remember how it, uh, it, it began, you know, so, and uh, uh, because, uh, like, they're telling even that they paid for people who were staying there, so they was uh, bringing the money and uh, all equipment, you know, uh, for my, to Maidan. But it's not like that. <laughs> I see this war a little bit like uh, Francisco de Goya's Disasters in War. In the tonality of your personality and your experience, uh, he never printed the Disasters in War when he was alive. Mm -hmm. 
And I think, so, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I think it, there is also a word that's missing to say, and that's resistance. Like, I feel Sinaida's work uh, alongside, I can think of Shirin Eshat from Iran, Tanya Bruguera in Cuba. They all have this sense of resistance and hope, which I think is essential to transform a society, because it might sound very utopical, but it could. And the proof is that uh, talking to Shirin Eshat, she told me how, I mean, she comes from Iran. We know how the regime in Iran is. And how when she gives a lecture, a talk, uh, thousands of uh, young girls, young female artists from Iran come to see her and to listen to her words. I think that's a huge contribution. Tania was exiled uh, from Cuba because of her art and how freedom of expression is, is a structural part of her work, going against the government, going against power. So if you can, if you can do that these women feel withdrawal, feel empty and feel uh, with more hope, I think that in itself is remarkable and really, really part of a transformation. And if you illuminate a little more, Shirin Shah and Waha Bilal have been right in this space, connected to the Tehran Gallery, mm. celebrating yeah. the war in the Iran. And you kind of aware of what there last November, we gave you the art of humanities for the world. I created where I live in Phoenix, so you see an artist as if we went into the presidency mm. of Cuba and we got a video. So I'm very touched to have you in the same in the same floor as those two phenomena being in Chester.
actually, you know, revolution, uh, let's say, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's in the process. So we have a war now, so it's not finished yet. So it means, uh, uh, you know, like I told you that, uh, uh, of course, some people lost, you know, uh, uh, a hope, you know, like, oh, you know, my done, uh, bring uh, my done. It was a, like a beginning for the war. They think like that, but in the same time, you know, like if uh, 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 to see, you know, generally, you know, the country in transformation. So that's for us is most important now. You know, is just to save the border, to save the country, and uh, we are still in the process. We can't say now about result. In the village, if you mean local, like village people, so actually uh, in our country now each one is a uh, uh, good politically educated. <laughs> so they, uh, you will. Mm. You will not find, you know, anyone who will. Uh, is, uh, most of the people are now are trying to analyze situation. To uh, they talk a lot about political political things, you know. So even in the village, so it's uh, uh, if you will talk with them, they will. Uh, they know all the names, all political names. So they know uh, uh, what happened there. When even without. Uh, let's say, you know, uh, newspapers and uh, other media, you know. Uh, because uh, uh, usually, you know, uh, let's say, you know, because uh, uh, the front, yeah. Volunteers go out on the battlefield and then they bring news from the battlefield to their families, and that's how the word spreads around too. So it's not only in mass media. But yeah, so let's say if uh, there is in the family uh, son or, you know, uh, like in age 18 and older, so it means that if they will take him to the army or he will go by himself. So it means they believe me that it's it's like uh, they are ready for this, you know. It's and uh, I met a few days ago here, you know. Uh, a, a, a priest from the Ukrainian church, and he said to me, you know, he was here, and he said if I was not a priest, I was gonna go to the war, you know, like. He, как доброволец, like volunteer. Actually, you know, the, it's like a, how you can uh, say about, you know, it's uh, not just a, uh, it's a fire, you know, it's, uh, you cannot, you know, immediately uh, uh, to uh, it. Yeah, yeah, so, so the war cannot finish like this way, but the most, even if it will finish, you know, like, you know, uh, uh, the most uh, uh, difficult is gonna be after you know three ten years you know so the последствия uh, yes uh, that uh, uh, let's say because uh, uh, the uh, uh, I've been uh, on the zone you know with a f where it's a fight now where it's a uh, conflict zone so uh, uh, the fields that are full of bombs. Yes, uh, uh, forest, you can go to the forest. Uh, all the agricultural fields, they're all uh, in injected with bombs in case of 
uh, enemies to step on them uh, or try to enter the country. So this is means that it takes it will take time. So also, you know, like uh, after war, you know, so it takes time, you know, to live with this, you know. So and how many производства, дома разрушены и так далее. This is for me is more dangerous uh, to think what is going to be after war, like in my head, you know. I, I was, I was also, I mean, I was, I, I, I'm in touch with the Ukrainian converts who have also helped me uh, to, uh, to get the clothes and everything for the soldiers, you know, and uh, one volunteer that came uh, to, uh, he said, that you're so bored in your way going here, like, forget about art, just go come to, to the battlefield, mm -hmm. to the battlefield. I just feel like this war is never going to be over uh, as, as a Ukrainian American. You know, I just, I'm just like, whoever asked me about the situation in Ukraine, I say, I, I, I gave up. Like, I don't want to know about Ukraine because I feel like I got so traumatized by uh, mm -hmm. what was happening there. Uh, you know, me living as a kid, that country was always like kind of like, oh, I don't want to remember. I, you know, I was living like kind of hiding the fact that I was Ukraine for a while, and um, yeah, I, I'm so glad that you actually, as, as a Ukrainian, that you have a hope, you know, for, for rebirth, for uh, uh, better politics, better art scene, you know, because, uh, uh, yeah, I, I've lost my mm -hmm. and yeah, so I'm so glad that your artwork is so powerful, that it, you know, it brings this part that you <laughs> Thank you, but uh, it's not only hope, I really, it's more than hope for me. I, I really believe in our people and a very strong, you know, power of us, you know, so we can stay. I, I, I'm, uh, I'm very often uh, talking with the soldiers, you know, who are staying in a fighting position. And I'm asking the second question, you know, how you, uh, and they believe that they, they told me, they are always saying me, you know, till the time we are staying and we will stay, you know, we will save our country. So that we say, they, they told me that the uh, hard time is already past. So the hardest time. So they told me uh, that if we passed hardest time, it means that we can continue to keep the borders. Thank 
I, I don't know anyone, you know, even from my foreignest friend who came to Ukraine and he couldn't feel it, you know. Everyone who came, like, had kind of enlightenment, you know, from this and and had, you know, like, believe it. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm sure that uh, if you, someone comes once, they want to continue to come, you know, it's like connection and it's big power and it's really uh, like uh, give you, you know, something special, you know, so it's how I uh, heard from my friends, you know, foreigners who came first time in Ukraine and now they want to come back more and more. <laughs> so, <laughs> are you going to come? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think uh, everyone wants for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, thank you very much for coming. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Today is very, it looks 